Duan Dali started his track and field training in China at age 13. Zhou Chunlan was China's national female weightlifting champion, who broke the national record twice. Huang Xiaoming is the first Chinese swimmer to win an Olympic medal. Dr. Xue Yingxian was the medical team head serving China's 11 national athletic teams. Their stories should make us rethink sports in China and the Beijing Winter Olympics. Hello everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. At China State Sports School, Duan Dali's daily routine started at 4 a.m. He ran a marathon every day and had to finish it by 7 a.m. After breakfast, he attended academic classes. The afternoon was for speed training. He had to run 500 and 800 meters repeatedly from 5 to 10 times. The evening was for strength training. He lived in a centralized camp at the school without personal freedom. The cookie cutter training did not consider each kid's capacity or talent, and Duan often reached his physical and psychological limits. He once fell from exhaustion while running and had to undergo surgery. He said, any Chinese parent with some financial means would not send their children to a sports school. It's too torturous and hard. Zhou Chunlan was born in 1971 to a family of modest means in Changchun, which is in the northeastern province of Jilin. In 1984, the Jilin weightlifting team was first established, and at 14, Zhou was selected by the weightlifting program. At the age of 16, she won her first national championship. At 17, she got three national gold medals, breaking national and world records. And at 19, she broke the national record in the 48 kilogram class. However, injuries from years of heart training began to plague her, including heart problems. At 22, Zhou did not win a medal at China's national games. This meant that her sports career was over. Apart from weightlifting, she had no other skills because of the poor education received at the sports school. Her coach arranged for her to work at the school cafeteria and help wash dishes. So she went from a national champion to a canteen nanny. After losing the canteen job a couple of years later, Zhou struggled to survive. Zhang Shangwu started gymnastic training at age 5 and was selected to be a member of China's national gymnastics team at 12. An injury ended his career and he became homeless and sells bracelets in Beijing's subway. I was recruited when I was 6 years old and trained like a professional. I have no education, no job skills. We should be treated like those leaving the army and get some sort of support. A 2007 Time magazine article mentioned that nearly 80% of China's retired athletes struggle with joblessness, injury, or poverty. It quoted a Chinese weightlifting coach who said, Those national medals are worthless. There are world champions who end up jobless after retirement. Throughout her years as a weightlifter, she took a so-called nutritional supplement that her coach required. She and her teammates developed mustaches and deep voices. They stopped menstruating and developed a prominent Adam's apple. The worst of it is that the steroids make her infertile. Zhou so told Time, I gave my youth to sport, but in return, I was thrown out like garbage with no knowledge, no skill, and a barren wound. Huang Xiaoming, the first Chinese Olympic medalist in swimming, said in a 2021 interview that Chinese athletes were taking stimulants in the name of winning glory for the country. Huang won a silver medal in the women's 200-meter breaststroke event at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, Korea. She also won 11 World Cup gold medals during her career. But she was forced to retire from swimming at the age of 23 due to the risk of paralysis from the prolonged intensive training. One pointed out that the Chinese Communist Party has politicized sports. Because 
是十八岁的时候，就十八岁因为是八八年奥运会拿了奖牌嘛，他觉得党培养你，要你入党，还是火线入党？呃，为国家争光是一个彻底彻底的谎言。我可以这么说，在零八年奥运会的时候，这些在北京进行比赛的运动员，他们家的父母在他比赛的时候，当地政府的官员拿着上百万的现金和他父母一起看他的比赛。如果他夺冠，钱就是你的；如果夺，如果不能夺冠，钱拿走。这个时候，不是他自己，他父母、政府的官员、所有的社会媒体给这个运动员的压力，是前所未有的大。One of China's most famous athletes, gymnast Li Ning, once said, "Our society needs gold medals, not sports. The National Sports Committee needs champions, not athletes." In order for the state to fulfill this mission, doping has been widely adopted as a national strategy. Athletes and doctors have no choice but to follow along and comply. But there was one doctor who fought this. Dr. Xue Yingxian started working for China's National Sports Committee in the 1960s. She once served as the head of the medical team that supervised 11 national athletic teams. She was also the designated sports doctor for star gymnasts such as Li Ning. She openly spoke against doping and was ostracized by the state. In 2017, she fled China to Germany with her son Yang Weidong. According to Yang Weidong's recent interview with Radio Free Asia on January 6, Chinese athletes began taking banned drugs as early as 1978. The Chinese women's volleyball team rose to world prominence in 1981. In fact, the volleyball team's doctor began experimenting with giving the team stimulants in 1980. After that, all Chinese athletes took stimulants. Dr. Xue has been against doping because of the harm. In the November 1987 issue of China's gymnastics magazine, Dr. Xue and her team published an article that detailed how Chinese gymnast Li Donghua ruptured Archie's tendons in both feet while doing a backflip as the result of taking hormones for a month. In 2008, the Chinese athlete Liu Xiang, the world's first Grand Slam athlete in the 110-meter hurdles, ruptured his tendon for the same reason. According to Dr. Xue, before the 1988 Seoul Olympics, Dr. Xue refused to give gymnast Li Ning a stimulant shot. She became marginalized. Yet she continued to speak up and was subjected to decades of political persecution. She was monitored, so were her emails and phones, and she was restricted from leaving the country because she might endanger national security. On the eve of the 2008 Beijing Olympics, officials went to her home to warn her that she'd better keep quiet about doping. Hospitals and doctors refused to give her medical treatment. Finally, in 2017, she and her son left China for Germany and took with them 68 volumes of her work journals from over the decades. Her son has compiled the journals into a book titled "China Drugs." Yang said in the interview that the publication is timed to coincide with the Beijing Winter Olympics, to remind the international community that the CCP violates Chinese people's basic human rights and the Olympic spirit. China's state business of sports is for creating national glory, to legitimize the Communist Party's rule, not for the love of sports. The corrupt system is built on the sacrifice of so many talented young people, their happiness, their health, and their future. As the world celebrates the achievements of the Chinese medalists at the games, we should also recognize the pain and suffering of the countless many others as the result of the cruel state system. Today's Chinese word is "ren." It means human, person. Take a look. It's very simple, right? And it does look like a standing person, other than one, two, three, or e r san. It's probably the simplest Chinese character, but an important one, because from this word you can grow other words like 人民 people, 人权 human rights, 人性 human nature, and 中国人 Chinese people. 
You learn the word China, which is Zhongguo, and person, which is Ren. Chinese people, therefore, is Zhongguo Ren. Let's keep Chinese people in our heart. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you next time.